So students, so we have finished the first eight modules and we have seen both the gaseous phase and the solid phase. So we have also ensured the derivation of the canonical partition function both in solid and the gaseous phase. So we now move to a new module which will be concerned with the distribution of the liquid molecules. So we are dense matter we are now focusing on. So dense matter means liquids. So gases and solids actually represent two extremes. So in the case of liquids, you know the liquids molecules are moving randomly with each other. So unlike gases or unlike solid where the solid are in a specific lattice states and in the gases you can have uh, your equation of state or you can also have this real equation of state from canonical partition function and the configuration of entropy. So in the liquid state it is not that easy. So why it is not easy because here will be a local ordering. So what you do usually is you take a central molecule and then uh, across the sphere you keep on measuring the density of molecules around a certain mont atom or molecule. So today's lecture what we will do we will focus on some very simple lattice based model and one of the lattice based model which comes to our mind is the Flory Huggins model. So Flory Huggins model in this lecture is devoted usually to the polymer solvent solutions. So in mixtures of polymer and solvent for example if you are about to calculate the activity coefficient of polymer in the mixture and of solvent in the mixture how we are going to go about and compute them with the help of the statistical thermodynamics. So in this content what we will uh, go ahead is we will see the Flory Huggins model which is for the polymer mixtures. Then a uh, very important concept is entropy of mixon because why I chose this polymer because it has chains. So chains means they are made of monomer units. So based on the chain length and based on the number of lattice sites it can actually have. So what do you mean by lattice sites? Means we are assuming it to be some sort of solid representation where you have the sites there let us say there are n number of sites. So which particular site the polymer can take up. So that is called lattice sites. So that is there will be a term which is the entropy of mixing. This entropy of mixing we will see later it is analogous to which we have been reading in the ideal gas concepts. Then from the entropy of gas and the enthalpy we can calculate the Gibbs free energy or the excess Gibbs free energy. From the excess Gibbs free energy you know classical thermodynamics we can calculate activity coefficient. So now let us start with the Flory Huggins model. So just want to summarize what I just now said. So liquids is very difficult to model. Why? Because it is very difficult in the sense that it has an increasing local order. So you may have some molecule here, then you may have number of particular atoms in its sphere, then as you go far apart from the central atom, the distribution of the atom, suppose this is the radius R1 and this is the radius R2. So when R1 goes higher and higher and higher, so it will mimic close to that obtained for bulk systems. So it means local ordering is very enhanced or pronounced. So short range attraction and the long range forces are very important. So this coordination shell, so the, let us suppose this is one shell, this is the other shell. So this coordination shell with increasing number of molecules. So if you go further and further away from the central atom, your number of atoms is increasing. Number of atoms increasing means your density also increases. So you have more number of molecules surrounding the central atom but at a longer distance. So if you keep on going further and further away, so there will be no short range interaction, there will only be long range interaction and you know if for a long range interaction your number of molecules will be very high, so it will almost behave like as a bulk solution. So simplification of the representation can be made if we assume them as solids. So for the time being let us assume the liquid to be a completely ordered system. So what do you mean by order? It means you have lattice based models. So what does this lattice based model mean? So suppose these are the lattice points. Suppose you want to, you have th two components A and B. So component A or component B. If suppose component A, five molecules of component A and four molecules let us say of component B what wishes to place itself within the lattice particular sites. So, we need to find out how many possible ways these molecules can enter these sites. So, let us say first you get with one molecule of A, it can 
have any of the particular lattice sites or another then molecule B enters which can any of the particular sites except for the one which is already occupied by the incoming molecule A. So, like that these are called lattice sites. So, it means if you have two components, the two components will enter different lattice sites and if you assume the component itself to be indistinguishable means component A are similar in type and component B are similar in type. So, we have some simplification. So, it means we will can model this type of lattice in which each lattice site has z nearest neighbor. So, if this is the lattice site, what are the different neighbors in the vicinity? So, we assume that it will have z nearest neighbors. Neighbors means like you have neighboring your neighbors as the word suggests which is the what is the closest other species which has in its vicinity. So, this type of lattice may be different. See if you have a one dimensional lattice means you have a linear polymer chain. So, you have a polymer chain means if this is the polymer let us say this is the polymer which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 monomers, 4 monomers ok. So, we with C chain length. So, polymer P of chain length C, chain length C means it has 4 monomers. So, C is 4, P is 1 because P is 1 means 1 polymer chain and it has 4 units it means 4, C equal to 4. So, such type of representation are one dimensional in nature a linear polymer chain is the simplest example. Now, likewise two dimensional is a surface. So, you have both x and y coordinates. So, it is two dimensional and then the comes the three dimensional which is a bulk fluid. We will take up these issues later when we discuss the radial distribution function. For the time being let us discuss the lattice based model. So, we focus on the one dimensional linear polymer chain. So, we will do what we do is for the one dimensional model we will extend to polymer solution. Polymer solution you can assume it to be a mixture of chain or multi site molecules. Multi site means if this chain needs to be inserted it can be either inserted in this manner or it can be either inserted in this manner or it can inserted like this manner. So, these are the different arrangements the polymer chain can take up in this particular 9 site model. So, it means that you have a multi site molecule. So, each of the particular atom will occupy one of the site. So, it is a multi site molecule and then there will be solvent because polymer needs to be soluble in the solvent. So, the solvent are single site molecules fully occupying the m sites of a lattice. So, it means once you enter all the polymer chain within this lattice, so whatever sites are vacant they will be taken up by the solvent ok. It means the solvent will be indistinguishable, you cannot distinguish one solvent molecule with other solution molecule, but the polymer chains will be distinguishable in the sense you have a 4 mer that is 4 monomer polymer chain you can place it in various ways within the lattice. So, these combination of this polymer chain and the solvent within the M sites of lattice model is called as Flory Huggins model based on the, the scientific workers who have derived this model equation. So, let us see what are the simplifications in Flory Huggins model. So, what we will focus is we will focus on identical polymer molecules each comprising of C monomers. It means uh, if I want to have two chains, let us say which is molecule of polymer, it is 4 mer. 4 mer means 4 is the number of monomers. So, the polymer is a 4 mer, another monomer is also will be a 4 mer. So, both will be same that is what it says. So, the model can apply only in those cases where each composes of C monomers. So, both the polymer chain consists of C monomers and each monomers occupy the single lattice site. So, with that I true, so it has 4 lattice sites. So, each one of the monomers this is monomer 1, monomer 2, monomer 3 and monomer 4. So, M1, M2, M3, M4 will occupy 4 different sites. So, it means remaining is vacant sites will be taken up by the S solvent molecules each occupying a single site that is because solvent molecules are not chains. So, it can occupy the remaining vacant sites. So, it means what are the total number of lattice sites? So, it will be P into C, P is the number of polymer chain. So, if there is 2 polymer chain this is 2 of the units 2 into 4 8 the total number of sites it will require plus whatever solvent molecules you are entering this 5. 
So it means if you have a particular system which has two polymer chain, each of four units and five solvent molecules mixed together, so you will have total of n which is equal to 8 plus 5, 30. So you will have 13 vacuum sites or you need to have 13 vacuum sites. Now each lattice site has a coordination number z. So the coordination number z it means because you have this monomer chains, they are monomer chains, it cannot be placed separately. So if this is the monomer chain, let us say 13 means I make a 13, this is 9, 10, 11, 12, let us say I have more number of sites in case of 13 because 13 is a even number. So I can place the four polymer chain matrix, let us say I place anywhere here, I place it. So this is P1 first polymer chain comprising of four monomers. Now I have to place the second polymer unit somewhere connected to this first polymer unit. So it means I can either place it here or I can place it here, okay? Because this does not work on those polymers which has branched or co-monomers. It will only work on those polymers which are homopolymers. So I can put here or here. So it means these are the its neighbors. The neighbors are either here or here. Either you can connect it here. So, if I connect it here, it can take up this point 1, 2, 3, 4 or if I want to connect it here, so I make some, it can be connected through this, this way. So, either way I can put the P1, P2 or P2 dash or P2. So, these are the number of ways we can put. So, it means the neighbors you have to see. So, this neighborhood I can put it here, 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 here or here. So, it has to be connected to each other. Then how do we compute the entropy change on mixing? So it means the entropy change for such process will depend on where you have one lattice sites of S fully occupied by solvent molecules and a second lattice of P into C sites fully occupied by polymer chains. So you have number of polymer chains, let us say 3. So you have 3 polymer chains multiplied by the number of monomers plus the solvent molecules. So what is the entropy of mixing? So you have to find the entropy of mixing for producing n number of sites with both polymer and solvent molecules in it. So we will be using the microcanonical ensemble and you know entropy change for the microcanonical ensemble is a k ln this and this is a function of nve, okay. The entropy change is this, this is what you call as degeneracy. Degeneracy means what are the different ways you can insert the polymer chains within the lattice sites. Okay, so we move ahead. So we give some definition. So it means if I talk up this definition, degeneracy P S P into C plus S, it means what is the number of ways or what are the number of ways I can place P polymer chains and S solvent molecules within these many sites P into C plus S sites. So it is number of different ways that P identical chain molecules containing C monomer units and S identical single site solid molecules can be placed on these many sites. So these many sites is actually num N sites. So if I want to write down some values, let us say I can ask you, so when all the polymer chains are inserted, so what is the probability or what is the number of ways? you can insert S number of sites into the lattice sites model. So there will be only one way because the solvent are indistinguishable, isn't it? So suppose you insert all the polymer chain first. Once you insert the polymer chain first, so you will be having number of vacant sites. So in those vacant sites, you can have to insert the solvent molecule. So it does not matter in which site which solvent molecule is there because all the solvent molecules are indistinguishable. So it means there is only one possible way of inserting S solvent molecules in S vacuum site. So it will be one, simply one. So there is one way. So obviously when there is one way, so if I want to write the entropy, so it is you have K ln this one, okay. So this will be 1, the number of ways will be 1. So entropy is 0. So there is only one possible way you can do it. Then uh, I can also write down this expression. You have P 
what is the number of ways or what is the entropy change I can insert p polymer change into p into c vacuum sites. So, that will be again given by k ln p and this s p comma s p into c plus s. So, if you understand this you will be able to understand this. So, this is the most tricky thing we have to calculate k ln So, it means what is the entropy change if I want to subsequently insert p polymer chains s solvent molecules into p into c plus s number of sites. This is what we need to calculate this s. So, this as I told you this is 1 because in this case there is only one way of inserting s solvent molecules in s sites, but this particular function is very difficult to calculate. There may be m possible locations m or in this case we are talking about n. So, this may be confusing to you is actually n possible locations for placing the first unit of first polymers because you can have the first unit if you place where you want to place the first unit. The first unit first monomer unit can be placed in any of the n ways n particular points. So, the second but the second unit in the polymer chain which is attached to the first can be located at any of the z coordination sites of the first location. Okay. And the third unit in the polymer chain can be located at any of the z coordination sites of the second unit except for the one site which is connected to the first unit that is there are only z minus 1 available sites. Okay. So, it means uh, if I want to uh, insert I will show in the next picture how these particular polymers are inserted. It means uh, if I want to insert like this. Okay. And uh, these are suppose these are the vacant sites. So, this first monomer has been inserted. Okay. So, what are the neighbors here? Neighbors here are how many neighbors are there? Let us say these are z neighbors. So, you cannot put it here, you can have you can either put it here. So, how many neighbors it has? Let us see. This has 1, 2, 3, 3 neighbors. Here also, if you have another site here, in the end also you will have 3 neighbors. You have neighbor here. 1, 2, 3. This is what you mean by the neighbors. So, when second unit in the polymer chain is attached to the first, it can be located at any of the z coordination site. Obviously, it can be located at any of the z coordination sites. Either it can be located at 1, either 2 or 3, whichever way it can be located. That is what it says. But except for the 1, so the second unit can be inserted located at any of the z coordination site of the first location, but when it get connected, so, the third unit in the polymer chain can be located at any of the z coordination sites of the second unit except for the one site connected to the first unit. So, it means because I have connecting the second unit already to the first unit. So, the second first unit's one of the coordination site is not available for an entry for the third unit. Likewise, I can extend it to number of chains. So, number of coordination sites will keep on decreasing as you keep on adding the polymer chains. That is the simplest assumption. So, from that what do we get? So, it means number of conformers for placing a polymer chain having c monomer units in n site lattices thus because it will be I have to multiply by n, n is the number of sites to z into z minus 1 into c minus 2. So, c is the polymer chain matrix length polymer So, it means what does it mean this particular expression? Your expression implies that let us say you have n here first if I want to break down this expression u of n here n let it be separate. If I want to expand this unit it means uh, the first one will have z, second one will be 1 less, third one will be again 1 less. So, it means the third one will be further less z minus 1 like that this will go into c minus 2 times because when you have the last unit to be added the cth unit you already added you do not need to have the number of neighbors 
and uh, another unit one term will be less because in the first term you already placing it in the n available sites so if it is the first this is the first unit this is the second polymer unit this is the third polymer unit like that for n mi c minus 2 terms so this particular thing z minus 1 will go for c minus 2 so it means the first one while you insert this will be n into z and then the remaining polymer chains number of neighbors will keep on z minus 1 it will be constant so z minus 1 raised to the power of c minus 2 this is the earliest model they have developed but the issue is it overcounts the number of conformations possible because coordination sites of a unit of the chain may be occupied either by a monomer unit of another polymer chain or by the present chain folding back upon itself so as the lattice becomes filled each side has fewer vacant nearest sites so what does it mean let us see pictorially so let us suppose you have uh, these many one two so seven by seven let us draw seven by seven matrix first two three so these are all vacant sites let us place two polymer chains of four units of monomer two, three four five six so we need another chain okay so let us put the first monomer let us put the first monomer in this manner let this be the first monomer okay i have inserted the first monomer chain that is polymer chain p1 so what are the neighbors it is having the first particular monomer unit it will have the neighbor here as 1 here as 2 here as 3 okay the first polymer chain first polymer chain is inserted in this 7 cross 7 number of lattice sites okay so this particular will have three possible places where the second polymer chain can be inserted let us suppose i insert the second polymer chain here in this part so i just dot make the dot 1 2 3 4 now if you see here for this particular central atom and for this particular central atom this has only two coordination sites nearby the coordination numbers across this particular atom is 2 while in the first case it is 3 so it means as and as you attach p2 again in the second case your number of coordination sites decreases in the first case this particular it has three sites while you attach the second polymer chain the end point has only two sites so that's what it says the coordination of sites of a unit of a chain may be either occupied by a monomer unit or by the present chain folding back upon itself so this is the case of the second part that is the chain is getting folded up upon itself so because of this it cannot access this particular vacant site because it is already filled in so the as the lattice becomes filled each side has fewer vacant nearest sites this is the way what they did they had a weighting the weighting on this particular equation they added a weighted function so what is that other function let us see so what flory huggins they did was they weighed the likely number of available coordination sites with the fraction of the lattice that was still uh, unoccupied so it means suppose if you are uh, entering one polymer chain so you calculate how many vacant sites are remaining how many vacant sites are re remaining so it is those remaining divided by the total sites available so the fraction of the sites remaining you multiply with that as a weightage in the weightage function so what did they do they'll do like this so it will be let us suppose for first one it is n into z first one it can access n sites so this is the first one second one it will have only n minus 1 by 1 because one of them it has already taken then this is the second one then third one it will be because it's already 
you are having one the number of neighbors will decrease because you have already inserted two of them so it will decrease by one and then again you have already placed two of them so your number of vacant sites will be n minus 2 by n this is the third and then fourth one will be n minus 3 by n this is the fourth so this is the first the first can take any of the n sides second can take one is has been taken so the second will have n minus by n fraction available vacant sites multiplied by the nearest neighbor z but the third one it will have less means it will have one less nearest neighbor to z minus one you multiply with the fraction of the lattice sheet which was still unoccupied and the third one have will be again multiplied with the fraction which is unavailable so this is the overall number of conformers. So, if I want to do some mathematics on it, it will be nothing but z by n into z minus 1 by n whole square into n into n minus 1 n minus 2 into n minus 3. Okay? So, it means this is a classic example of having a four-mer polymer unit. So, four mer polymer unit, again I will just explain what does that mean. First monomer goes here, second monomer goes here, third one goes here, fourth one goes here. So, these are the number of conformations. Okay. So, these are the number of conformation or number of ways where it can be inserted. Now, what I do is, I will just again uh, simplify it further. So, this becomes z by n into z minus 1 by n whole square by n factorial. I can write n factorial by n minus 4 factorial. Okay, little bit. Now, while this is done, what are the number of conformation available now for the second 4 unit chain? So, we have inserted the first 4 unit chain. Now, what are the possible ways I can insert the second polymer chain? So, this will be as it is again same thing. So, it will be n minus 4 the first chain it can have any of the z neighbors the first chain is this so initially the first chain so i can in the second four unit chain the first can have any of the n minus 4 sides because n minus 3 sides are already occupied then i multiply them with the z that is the co that is the neighbors and uh, it will be again be multiplied with the second monomer unit n minus 5 by n so this is your second unit and the third unit it will be one less so z minus 1 into n minus 6 by n so this is your third unit and the fourth unit it will be z minus 1 into n minus 7 by n this is the fourth unit okay so i am breaking the formula n minus 4 the first monomer unit takes z into n minus 5 by n the second z minus 1 into n minus 6 why is this z minus 1 because it is already taken up two of the monomer units have already taken up so we will have one less neighbor so it is z minus 1 okay so now if i want to simplify this further again it becomes the same thing you have to uh, do some mathematics here z by n z minus 1 by n whole square n minus 4 n minus 5 n minus 6 and n minus 7 okay this is the expression so simplifying it further you will get z by n into z minus 1 by n whole square n minus 4 factorial by n minus 8 factorial this expression okay now i will ask you one question so what is the possible ways what is the possible ways available to both the units now all the polymer chains are indistinguishable so for if they are independent so it means i have to take the product of these two so if you take the product of these two so overall number of conformation available to both units what it will be so it will be nothing but you just take the product of both this it will be z by n 
z minus 1 by n whole square n factorial by n minus 4 factorial into z by n square n minus 4 by n minus 8 factorial okay so I am doing a product of these two so if you do the mathematics correctly you will get z by n whole square and then you will have z minus 1 by n so this is 4 or I can write 2 into 2 it will be becoming easier 2 into 2 then I can write down this as n factorial by n minus 8 factorial okay so if for a polymer chain each of c monomer units on a lattice of n sides now I have taken two monomers and each of the polymer chain has four monomers so two polymer units attached together now likewise if I consider for p number of polymer chains each of c monomer units on a lattice of n sides I can generalize the expression I can write down in this manner so it will be z by n by p because for two polymer units there is two here so it for p polymer units it will be p here then this is the fraction z minus 1 by n so this will be then I can write down p into c minus 2 okay so because I had uh, two monomer units two polymer units each of four so four into four plus four is four minus two because that is why it's two is coming so I can generalize it and might give a product of p into z minus 2 because this is follows from the first expression which I derived earlier without counting the over counting of the neighboring sites then I can also write down this as n factorial likewise n factorial and this I can write down as n minus p into c factorial okay so n that why it, it came to the picture because n minus 8 8 is nothing but 2 into 4 where 2 is the number of polymer chains and 4 is the number of monomer units in a one polymer chain so this is the expression number of ways I can insert p polymer chains each of c monomer units on a lattice of n sides so the remaining sides will be taken up so total number of sides it thus becomes p into c plus s so p into c is taken up by these number of sides so s is remaining so they will be filled by S solvent molecules. The solvents being indistinguishable does not provide any new conformers. So this you should understand. It will not provide any new conformer. So whatever number of ways you have, it will be the same because solvent will just occupy the other vacant sites. It's nothing to do with the conformers. So now I come back to the degeneracy. So in this case, a degeneracy of number of ways of locating P and S onto p into c plus s sides thus is z by n to the power of p then it will be z minus 1 by n into p into c minus 2 into n factorial so this is what we have got now now we are through with our number of ways or degeneracy or I can also write this expression something like this z instead of n I write here p p into c plus s instead of n okay this way I write p again n I write here p into c plus s to the power of p into c minus 2 and again here also I am writing p into c plus s factorial by so obviously this they will subtract each other you will only left with s factorial because n is equal to p into c plus s so this I am just substituting okay in this expression so this is the expression I am getting so I am getting this expression and when there is no solvent molecules so when s is 0 because we know that uh, you have this s of s is equal to 1 so s is equal to 0 because it is k ln so when 1 comes out here it will be 0 so for solvent molecules there is no entropy change so it means what you are left with then p this also we can write 
if I want to insert p number of polymer chains into p into c number of vacuum sites, it will be z into p into c by p z minus 1 into p into c by p into So, what I did s equal to 0 I inserted in the previous expression because there is no solvent molecules. So, if there is no solvent molecules, so this is what is the number of ways only to insert the polymer chains in these many sites. So, I inserted s equal to 0 I get this expression that is it. So, how can I write the entropy of mixing expression? So, the entropy of mixing expression you very well know that delta s mix will be equal to then what is the entropy change of the actual mixture minus what is the entropy of the polymer chain kept into the polymer number of sites p into c minus s of what is the entropy change in forming these many solvent molecules. So, this is 0 you do not have to worry about this only this is there. So, what you do is you get here so it is k ln delta so not delta it is I am just uh, just writing out the expression that is it. So, it will be p s p into c plus s. So, it will be p p into c okay. and then k ln of s comma s. So, this goes is 0. So, what you have is simply k into ln of p s p into c plus a s divided by p p into c. So, now you have an expression of entropy of mixing this is very important expression we have the got. So, this entropy of mixing now what you do you substitute all the values from equation a and b and simplify you substitute the expression of a and b in c substituting a and b in c so you have expression for the degeneracies of both the cases you get so delta s mix you will get so you will get is k l n p into c plus s into p to the power of p then you have z minus 1 by p into c plus s by p of c minus 2 then p into c plus s by s factorial. This is the first term the second term will be z into p into c by p and then you will have z minus 1 by p into c p into c minus 2 p into c factorial this is the expression. So, simplify this expression if you want to simplify this uh, k ln of p into c by p into c plus s this will be as it is. So, now what I will do I will take up this z minus 1 I will free one of this expression z minus 1 into p into c plus s. So, what it will be let me write down the expression p into c minus 1 I take out this one expression of this and cancel out z minus 1 both sides. So, if you do that I will cancel out this z minus 1 z minus 1 to the power of p into c minus 1 c minus 2 in both sides. So, if you do that what you will be left with is this thing p into c plus s factorial by s factorial into p plus c factorial ok. ok. So, I have did these changes. So, I just took out this expression. Now, you just open the bracket k p 
c minus 1 ln of p into c by p into c plus s expression plus k into p into c plus s ln of p into c plus s minus p into c plus s okay I just wrote this via Stirling approximation, both the expression, okay, everything remains the same. So, just want to tell you this p into c plus s gets cancelled out with this uh, expression and uh, z minus 1 and this also get cancels out. So, you get this expression and uh, well, I have not completed this, you will have some other terms also minus s ln s plus s this is the numerator. This was a numerator, now I am writing the denominator term minus p into c ln p cross c into p cross c. This is the overall expression. Okay. Now let us simplify it further. So, if you simplify this further, what you will get is uh, finally kp kp c minus 1 ln of p into c by p into c plus s plus k ln p into c plus s minus s ln s minus p into c ln of p into c this expression okay so you collect the terms of k p into c together so this terms you can collect this term and this term this one term so if you do that you collect the terms you will get k into p into c minus p minus p into c okay ln of p into c plus k of minus p into c minus p plus p into c plus okay and some just mathematics involved nothing else I am just uh, simplifying this terms. So, you get this k then p plus s into ln of p into c plus s minus p ln of p into c minus s ln of s okay this expression simplifying it further so now if i want to make it per molecule basis what i will do this is delta s of mix i will divide it by the k is already there this k i am taking it in the denominator so i am just number of molecules is p plus s i am dividing it by p plus s so if i divide both the sides by p plus s it becomes a per molecule basis so it will be mole fractions now so i can write down here it will be minus p upon p plus s ln p into c by p into c plus s minus s of p plus s ln of s by p into c plus s i have divided by p plus s so it becomes then it will become mole fractions now we are in molecules per molecule it becomes mole fractions so what is this is nothing but if i want to say this is nothing but your mole fractions minus p by p plus s it is the mole fraction of the polymer molecule xp and this will be nothing but the volume fraction phi p and this will be nothing but what is it mole fraction of the solvent molecules into ln of the volume fraction of the solvent molecule okay so excess here is s by p plus s xp here is p by p plus s okay these are very important these are mole fractions and for volume fractions you will be having phi s phi s is s upon p into c plus s and phi p volume fraction of the polymer it will be p into c by p into c plus s this is very important this is your mole fractions and this is your volume fraction 
okay. So, we have deduced all the information in terms of entropy of mixing expression. So, on a molar basis thus we can write down this the delta S mix by R equals to minus x p ln of phi p minus x s ln of phi s okay, on a molar basis. Now, if both polymer and solvent are of the same size then the volume fraction will become equal to mole fraction. So, it means delta s mix. So, obviously then it will become c equal to 1. So, if you put c equal to 1 in the expression, so what you will have is simply be the mole fraction x p ln of x p minus x s ln of x s. This is it. Both polymer solvent same molecule. So, each polymer molecule are of, of c. So, it means c is equal to 1, p and s both are similar. So, then excess entropy thus I can give as this excess entropy delta x excess entropy by R is nothing but the difference in the entropies at the given state minus delta mix of S when they are formed from the pure state that is it. So, it means this is nothing but minus x p ln of phi p minus x s ln of phi s it, this is you know this is x p ln of x p plus x s ln of x s ok. So, that is the entropy of mixing is given by the actual entropy of mixing minus entropy of mixing when both polymer and solvent are of the similar size. So, so this will give the expression exact expression that is minus x p ln of phi p by x p minus x s ln of phi s by x s. So, this will be your excess entropy. So, once we know excess entropy we should also know excess enthalpy and if we know excess entropy and excess enthalpy you can calculate the excess Gibbs free energy and from the excess Gibbs free energy you take a partial derivative with respect to number of moles of either solvent or polymer you get activity equation. This is exactly what we are going in the next slide. So, if you add the excess entropy, so adding the excess entropy to the excess enthalpy. So, this excess enthalpy this expression is already uh, done that is what is the enthalpy change if you add this. So, it has a property which is this property Flory Huygens property this is an is a constant. C x p into phi s phi p. So, this is the enthalpy change when you added the polymer chains in the solvent molecules and this is some exchange energy term, this is exchange energy correlation term ok, this is a Flory Huygens parameter. So, in short you can write Flory Huygens parameter, Flory Huygens parameter. So, this is known to you and we have calculated excess entropy. So, it means so excess Gibbs free energy then it becomes R t equal to H excess minus T into S excess by R t or I can write down as this excess plus C into x p by phi s into phi p plus this is the previous expression which we just now got ln of phi p by x p plus x s ln of phi s by x s ok. So, this is the expression for H enthalpy I divide by R t and this is the expression for the entropy excess entropy. So, this is the overall expression. Now, what you do is you define these terms mole fraction of solvent molecule s by p plus s mole polymer molecules is p by p plus s phi s I can write down as s by p into c plus s phi p s p into c by p into c plus s. If you write these volume fractions of polymer solvent, mole fractions of polymer solvent, then what you do? You use this expression ln gamma i is equal to gi expression. So, what I do is I have changed some number of moles to mole fraction. So, here you can do this from this basic you know is the partial excess gives free energy is gives the activity coefficient logarithmic value of activity coefficient. Do the mathematics correctly first for the solvent gamma that is activity coefficient of a solvent in the polymer mixture is nothing but the derivative of this expression. 
the expression is this expression expression let us say it is expression d. So, this is expression d. So, this expression d you insert here multiply by p by s and divide by s. So, instead of ball fraction I am calling into number of sites. Okay. So, you will get this expression there is a lot of number of steps involved when you do the derivation you will get this expression. This is the expression for activity coefficients for a solvent molecules in a polymer chain. So, you need to know the C value number of polymer chains, the volume fraction of the polymer, the volume fraction of the solvent, the mole fraction of solvent and the mole fraction of the polymer all everything you require to calculate this. You need the also the Flory Huggins parameter to compute the activity coefficient. Likewise, or also we can do for polymer we have this expression. So, instead of xp you write p upon p plus s and multiply by gx by rt. Do the mathematics correctly you will again get this expression. So, the set of expressions ln gamma i s. So, you get ln gamma s and ln gamma p. These are the expression obtained from the Flory Huggins model. So, this successful model has been used for polymer solution, but it is not internally consistent. Let me tell you why. Because except for overlap and chain connectivity constants, the polymer and solvent molecules could be located anywhere. So, we are not telling where the polymer and where the solvent molecules will be located. And all these particular locations are of equal occurrence or equal probability. So, equal energies therefore, equal Boltzmann energy. So, there is no there is a discontinuity or this is the disc in, inconsistent in this. Further, the enthalpy of mixing term we recognize that different configuration can have different energies because if you place like this or you place like this or you place like this, there will be two different enthalpy change. So, that enthalpy change will also change. So, different configuration can have different energies and therefore, are no more they are not most likely. Although both the configuration looks similar, but both of them even though they are of they we say the arrangement is same, but the energy the enthalpy value will be different. So, that is where it is not internally consistent. Nevertheless, it is mainly used for polymer chains which are equal in magnitude. It is not used for co-block polymers or which are different monomeric chains. Okay. So, this is why this Flory Huggins are used can be used for those polymer solutions which have straight chains. So, I would like to conclude my lecture here. So, in this you please go through chapter 10 of the book, chapter 10 you go to the initial part you can just go through the reading of the different excess Gibbs free energy models and then we come to the I think later on sections the Flory Huggins model. Okay. Thank you.